Hello crafty friends, my name is Alicia but you can call me Crafty Owl. And in today's video, we're going to see if we can make mini envelopes with the regular size envelope punch board. I hope you'll stick around and find out the results. After I introduced the latest sheet load of cards, January 2023, and showed you my first set where I made a mini envelope to go on the front of my cards, I had a lot of you inquire about making this size envelope if you only had the regular size punch board and not the mini envelope punch board that I used in the process video. Well, when it was just one of you who asked, I said, you know, go ahead and try it. You know, you might have to adjust it a little bit. It's not going to hurt. But then I had a lot of you ask. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to try it for you. And that way, when I get more questions, I can direct you to this video. Now we're going to go through and talk about each board and I'm going to show you some different examples and sizes using the regular punch board versus the mini punch board. Then I'll tell you some other options maybe for getting those mini envelopes. And at the end, I'm going to give you my opinion on what I would do if I didn't have the mini envelope punch board yet. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's look at the envelope punch boards themselves and just look at their similarities and differences. First of all, they both make envelopes. They have the notch punch and the score line, and they have the corner rounding punch for the corners of your envelope flaps. Some of the differences are the size of the boards and the size of the envelopes they say they can make. Now, one thing you'll notice later too is the notch on the original envelope punch board is much larger than the notch that gets put on with the mini. On the regular one, the smallest card size that it shows you that you can make an envelope for is two by three and a half, which is a gift card. So two inches by three and a half inches. On the mini envelope punch board, it tells you how to make a one by one inch envelope. And then this one only goes up to a four inch square envelope. Another thing you can do with both of these is kind of look at the sizes they give you on the board and adjust it a little bit to fit your needs. For instance, when I made the original envelopes, it said I would need a three and one eighth inch square piece of paper, but you might have seen to create this, I only had a four by six piece that I wanted two envelopes out of. So the largest I could go was three inches. So I'll go ahead and show you how I did one of those so you can see the results. Now for my original envelope on the card, I wanted a one and a half by two and a half inch envelope. But like I mentioned before, they said you would need a three and one eighth inch square. So I actually cut it to three inches and I still use the one and three quarters first punch line. Now, if you have never used an envelope punch board before, you line your paper up with the first punch line and that is the dimension or they give you here for the score line. So I'm going to line this up with one and three quarters, give it a punch. Now, before I move this, I need to score this line. Now the mini envelope punch board does come with its own scoring tool, but honestly, I think this front is a little bulky. Now it works and I did actually use it for these, but I found as I was testing for today's video, I actually prefer the scoring tool that came with the regular size one. This is of course going to be bigger and bulkier than probably what this board could handle, but I do find that the tip is a finer point to get right up in there. So I accidentally did pull this away, but it's a quick fix. I just press down on the punch and just put my paper in there until it doesn't move anymore. And now I know too, I'm at the one and three quarters. So I'm gonna score this line and I usually do it, you know, about three times. Now for your next punch, you have to rotate it, but you do not line it up with that one and three quarters again. Instead, you line up the score line that you just made with this little notch right here. 
When that's lined up, you punch it again and you rescore it. And then you rotate, line up the score, and you keep doing that until all four sides have a punch or a notch and a score in them, just like that. Then the back of the punch, if you put your corners in there, it is gonna round those for you. Now, before I fold this into the envelope, we are gonna pull in the regular envelope punch board and use these exact same dimensions so we can look at the difference. Once again, I have a three inch square, just like with the first one, and I will be making that first punch at one and three quarters inches. Now I am gonna use different pattern papers so you can tell which I use with the regular envelope punch board and which I use with the mini. So we're gonna start here and line it up with the one and three quarters. Punch, score, rotate to line that up and just keep doing that until all four sides are done. Once again, we have our piece punch scored and the edges rounded, but now I'm gonna show you the big difference. Look at how much bigger the notch is in the regular envelope punch board. Well, that's gonna end up throwing off your width and your height because it punches further into the piece of paper. So let's go ahead and fold these. So here we have the mini one. And here is the one with the regular punch board. Now you'll see how close here the flap is to the edge, which is pretty much right at it. You could go with this, you know, it still makes an envelope, but I think it looks much more realistic when your flap doesn't go all the way to the edge. Also, you'll notice the corner round was different. This one is a little bit smaller to fit the size. So now once I made this, I knew that if I adjusted either my paper size or the punch in increments, I could make different size cards. So we're gonna try some of those so you can see the difference. Now what I did when I was going along, I did make sure on the flaps to always put what my square was, which this was three inches, and what my first punch was, which is one and three quarters for this one. Just so later, if I go back and I have a favorite one, I know exactly what size and where to punch it. For my next two tests, I still have the same three inch square, but the first one, instead of punching at one and three quarters, I'm gonna punch one smaller at the one and five eighths inch mark. So again, I'm gonna write that down and let's see how this one works out. Okay, this one is punched, so let's go ahead and fold it up. Now that top flap doesn't go all the way down, so that's better, but this one is much more of a square than when we punched at one and three quarters. So you'll see it's a little less wide and a little bit taller which if you wanted a square envelope, this would work perfectly. So then my next idea was still using the three inch circle, sorry, the three inch square. <laughs> and now I'm gonna punch, instead of going down to one and five eighths, I'm gonna go up to one and seven eighths, and maybe that will be our lucky number. As you fold in the sides, it's looking pretty good, but look what happens when you fold up the bottom. It actually goes up into that flap, and then the top can't fold down. Now you could definitely cut this off if you wanted and have more of like a straight or a flat flap and do the same on the other side. And then this would be more of a business size ratio, you know, like a longer, maybe a slim line or mini slim line. And here's the difference from the original. So here's the punch that one and three quarters. 
so it's a little bit wider and a little bit less tall and that's why that flap is coming down past this edge of the envelope so going bigger definitely wasn't the thing I kept trying different size squares you know here I had three inches and I went I think up to three and five eighths and down to three inches every eighth of an inch in squares every eighth of an inch in punches and let me show you those results so here are the results of all of my different tests again i would have some that pretty good ratio but they weren't the same size as the original and then when I would adjust it it would either be more of a square or you'd have the issue where the flap was too big for the size of the envelope so I decided instead of just keep trying numbers on my own I would get out my iPhone which I have an envelope punch board app and what the app helps you do is make envelopes for card sizes that are not given on the board itself. So with the app, I measured the original size of my envelope and up on screen now you'll see that I'm going to put in those dimensions and then in my settings I'm going to leave a margin on to see if that's what we need to do because if you're ever using this and you have a card that's like four and a quarter by five and a half you don't want your envelope to be four and a quarter by five and a half you want it to be just a little bit bigger so you want to add on those margins well since my envelope was already made I wasn't sure which to do so for this first one I did leave it on and let's go ahead and try those dimensions on the regular envelope punch board. So with this first test using the app, my square is three and five eighths inches and my first punch is going to be at two inches. So once again, I'm going to write that on the corner. And this time I'm going to have this pattern be the inside so we can tell the difference between me just testing on my own and me using the app and my first punch is at two inches. So let's go ahead and make that envelope. Now this did work, the flaps look good, and it's a little bit more of a square than I would like, but if you do like this size for your card, go ahead and use it. Here is the original, so you'll see it's quite a bit bigger. Even though we put in these dimensions, it did have that extra margin added on. So let's try that app again. And instead of having the margin, we will just stick with the size, this size without a margin. For the second test using the app, this is a three and three eighths inch square. And we're gonna make our first punch at one and seven eighths. This one is still a little bit taller, but I would say the proportions are a little bit closer to what I would think an envelope would be when you're going for like an A2 proportion. So here you'll see those two side by side. Again, mine is still smaller, but I think you could make it work with this one right here, which again is I hope that seeing these all made was helpful for you and that if you do have that regular envelope punch board, you'll be inspired to go ahead and just give it a try. Either use the dimensions that I gave you for what I think looks the best or play around with the sizes and that first punch and find one that you like better. Now, if you don't have any punch boards, I know that they make punches, like I have a punch that makes an envelope. I think it is smaller than this, but it's still an adorable little envelope. 
And more and more, I am seeing mini envelope dies. Now, I did do a quick search before I started this video, and you can find dies from anywhere about $5 up until $25. And those dies only make one size envelope. Right now on Amazon, you can get the mini envelope punch board for about $16. Now that will fluctuate some depending on how popular they are. I also did see while I was searching for the mini envelope punch board, I think scrapbook.com has it, and so does Joann. And if your Joann's has these in store, I think this week they are on sale. I think you can get it for a little over $10. So you might want to check your local Joanne. I think if you go to their website, you can tell if you have any in your store, but I know that they are not available for shipping. So 10 bucks is an even better deal. And honestly, for myself, if I thought mini envelopes was something I was going to make a lot of, I would go ahead and invest in this one because you can make tons of sizes and it's like 10 or $15. Now, some of you have already used my Amazon link and grabbed your own mini envelope punch board. Thank you so much for using those links. They never cost you anything extra, but they give me just a little portion of the sale and then I can keep crafting here on YouTube. I do have some links in the description box below. I will go ahead and I think add the scrapbook.com link, which I am an affiliate, and I'll add the Joanne link, which I am not, but I think that $10 is a great deal. So I want you to use or get the best deal that you can. But you know what? If you are on a no buy or a low buy or don't wanna purchase another tool, use that regular punch board. I know many of you already have it, so you know, like I always say, use what you have. You don't always have to go out and buy something new to create what you see others creating online. Think about what you have in your own stash that you could make do with. I even know that there are ways where you can cut your own envelopes or make your own envelopes that you don't even need any kind of special tools. I do think you have to do some scoring and then a little cutting with scissors, but you could even try to make your own that way. Why don't you let me know in the comment section below if you have either of these punch boards or if you have some dies and maybe what your favorite one is with a good size. And I hope you enjoyed this little demonstration to see if this would work. And until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.